Welcome back everybody, let's play Kaze no Klonoa Moonlight Museum. Last episode, we made our trek through the latter half of World EX and unlocked the ever so interesting Vision 6. So let us see what that is. The final vision of the game. And this one... It's, uh... Kind of rough. It's not difficult in terms of platform or anything like that, but it has some very unpleasant puzzles, one could say. Oh, you! <laughs> and you see what I was trying to do there, though. I mean, it's just the basic idea of getting both the uh, Moo block and the boomy over there where it needs to be. So I need to bring the Moo block over here so I can actually reach the boomy, and then once I have the boomy, I need to bring the Moo block over there. So I can use the both of them to get up here. And that's the opening room, so. It's not exactly complicated, but I think that gives a pretty good idea of what we're in for in this level. Hopefully, I'm going to remember what to do everywhere, too. Oh. Options seem very limited right now as to where we can go. There was one puzzle I had a real hard time with in this level, but I think it was only one. So hopefully I'll just remember how to do that, and it'll be alright. Plenty of things we can do with this block. What would normally happen? No one over here. That would happen. What we need to make happen is getting. Come on. to make happen is getting... I think I know where it is. Yeah, that key right there. So I believe all I have to do to do that is take... Oh, come on. I believe all I need to do that is take that move lock I had with me on that floating grate. And then from there... Jump on up. That's too high. Took the move lock alone. I call it doing something really odd with this to devise a solution. And kind of annoying too. Ah. What did I do for this? This took me some time to figure out, too. <laughs> I'm just getting this one key. And I'm rem remembering more and more how every single portion of this level is frustrating to me at, at least some level, so I'm sure I'm going to end up taking up the entire episode with this. But we will try. I've done it before, and I'm also accidentally pressing my caps lock key. What? No! What is happening? So I'm just take that and then oh, I can't. Darn it! I was just gonna take, leave this block on here, and then from there I'd go on up to pick up that flying moo, and then just jump from here. But I can't do that anyways because I need to have the stream blocked. The issue is, we need to have the block up here at the same time we have the flying move over here so that we can double jump off this block up there. 
I remember when I did this and actually solved it, I it felt really awkward, like something that you weren't supposed to be doing. Like it involved kind of like bugging out on top of that crate. So I'm kind of wondering if I even did this right the first time anyways. I'm really just doing the only thing I was able to come up with anyways. Say that you do something involving. What I'm trying to remember is how you could possibly leave this block here covering. Well, here, both covering the gap and functioning as something you can double jump with. Because the gap is too high for you to double jump with alone. So that's what you need the move for. Amber just cheesing it in a really weird way. That didn't feel like something you're supposed to be able to do. Which may have involved doing what I just really did. Oh, come on! Stop it! He does not like this at all. But I don't know if that's something you're supposed to be doing or not. And the issue is, we need to have something covering this right here. We need to have the move block explicitly there, because it needs to be both offering us something to step on and covering up that air. then from here I don't have any way of getting down. Which means that I need to be using move lock for hmm, more than one thing at once, basically. Something you could always do is something I, in fact, mentioned just last episode. In fact, I mentioned an episode before that. I think this is what, I, what I'm talking about. What I was talking about when I said that I kind of cheesed to this in some weird way. That I wasn't sure I was supposed to be able to do or not. I did that. And you'll. Cause what makes you so confused as to whether or not that's what you're supposed to do is. I was so sure you need this flying move for something. But, oh well. If you don't, then whatever. Basically. Anyways, let's make some more progress and pick up that triangle key we're eyeballing at the moment, because that is what will supply us with an answer to- oh no! I see. With answers to our questions in life. Okay, so we need to preemptively put the move block that I was just holding on a higher ledge. And that ledge up here. Well, I don't remember my exact means I devised of doing that. That works. 
should work at least. And then from there, I believe I can just use this move block to jump on up. Oh, God. Oh, what do you do for this? You do that. <laughs> it, it's the basic idea of overthinking something. It's just something that happens sometimes. You're in a game where that's making you think a lot all of a sudden, and then... When you get something thrown at you that's like that, it's such a simple solution, it doesn't even cross your mind, because you just assume it has to be something more complex than that. Oh well. No harm done. No stupid. Except for making me look stupid, but... That's gonna happen anyways. Whoa. Backwards. Probably some platforming too. I kind of wish that this final level had some more platforming, but at the same time, 2D uh, Clinon games are a lot more about puzzles anyway, so I guess I can't complain that much about it. Alright. <laughs> had to invert that before I started making things blow up. I had the right idea. And usually whenever you get two boomies at, and one switch, you know what to do. Just... basically... put up a delay between their two timers and then... set them next to the... one switch, and there you go. The fact that I have, I still have no, uh, Dreamstone, or, uh, no Moon Fragments is kind of bothersome. Like I said, this place is actually pretty long. As annoying as that might be. I don't know which way I want this to be, if I want this out or not. Oh no! I can tell you, I probably don't want that. Happening. Oh, come on! What's happening. That block falling. Mm. Okay, well, which way is the out position? This is the out position. So now if we restart the room this way, we should be alright. In that regard. Now I can push this. I'm pretty sure it's of absolutely no use to us if we make it drop down into that hole. This looks like a challenge. A true test of skill. Anyways. You got a key. I guess I have half the dream stones at this point. Well, you still expect to have collected more moon fragments by now. What have we here? Things that can explode, things that can't explode. to myself. Load this thing up. I'm going up memory right now, but I believe I want to take this with me right now. this on top of it. 
Then you take the other explosive block. And like we've done before, all I have to do is because it needs to elevate or you don't have a block, I'll have to hold it. I think I have to stand right in the middle here too. So I'll put this here. So when I pick it up, put me in the middle. There we go. Success. I would feel really smart if I could figure that out, except I was doing it off of memory. So, well, no self esteem for me. Alright, what's over here? Aside from pain, I guess. It's a nice little loop. And some stuff to blow up. Now that we've done that, we can bring this up over here and blow those things up easily. There's also, finally, a moon fact we found over there. So now what we can do, I believe, is just... this guy explode over there, and then we can pick up the moon fragment from here. Yep. Although, we don't have the key that we need to get through there. So I guess we did that a little bit earlier than we ought to have. Sure we need that, we can run up here and I believe find the square key somewhere or another. We need to get through that fan though, and to do that we will use the smooth lock we just opened up. I've mentioned a few times before. There. See, I guess the developers and artists are supposed to do that, so... I, I'm pretty sure you have to do that, in fact, at a couple points in the game. So I think developers know that you have to do that. Or know that you can do that. Crap. This part is one that got stuck in the room all the time. wonder was how that actually helped me. In some way it did, I know that. I'll go through there. But I can't remember as how. I think I can get up here, but the issue is I need to actually get through there. So I need to come up here with this open, and then hit the switch again. Let's make it close. And I need to... I don't remember what that is. I also want to say I have to hit the switch twice. Not twice, three times. No, I want to hit the switch twice while I'm not here, because I want to come up here, and then I want the switch to hit two times. I want to open, and then close. No, in fact, I just want to open. I want to be here, and then I want the switch to open. The issue is I can't run up there in time. So as a means of getting over there, getting into that room, 
doesn't work. Which is where this comes in. This guy's timer is only so long. What? No. Don't go in there. I should time that through perfectly. Block here. At least I don't think it's set up. So, what I think I might be able to do is. Well, really, I think I might just be able to. to be on top of that switch block that the fan's leading to when it switches off. When it becomes intangible. But I don't remember how I can do that, because I don't have the time to run up. I need to use this fan in some way, I'm pretty sure. I'm very sure of that, in fact. I can't just be holding right when the Boomy sets off the switch. This one, the only way I can handle that is. Oh, come on! It's not going up there. But I'm just holding right when the, those switches uh, become. tangible again, of course, for one, I'll get trapped, but second, I regain control after both of them close, so I can't get to them anyways. If I need to hit the switch, I can do that. My problem is I need to do more than hitting the switch. stream still c carries me for a while. I know I'm neglecting this left side over here, but I don't recall what use that is of to me at all, and now I'm stuck. So that's the big question to me. But I recall now that the solution had something to do, actually, with not what I'm thinking about right now, and what I've been talking about, but instead, with using the move lock, one of the move locks at least, to... Oh, darn it. Block a current. Or rather, the current, since there's only one, but... <laughs> just how this whole left side thing came into play. Because then, to do that, what I would have to do... <laughs> ...would be to use two of these blocks to go on up top of there. Uh, 
Uh, but how would I do that? I believe that was what I ended up doing. Using these two blocks, just in some way. Bring a block up here. But to bring a block up there, I need to do something that I haven't actually managed. And that is where a problem arises, because I don't know of a way to get all these blocks up top now. But I'm pretty sure... I do know that that could be a solution if I manage to do that. Because then I could open up and then throw a block down to close the current. Or, instead of doing all that complicated crap, what I could do is just... But then the question is how I... So now my new idea is to block the current with this new lock right now, and then have, and then just get up there while the current is like this. Can I not just do that? If this is actually a solution, I should just cut a ton of this out. Wow. I, I, sit, I should be cutting things out right now. I may or may not cut a large portion of that out, largely due to shame. It's like I said earlier, overcomplicating things just by habit is something that ends up happening here. At least to me. I'm kind of hoping it's not only me. Whoops, let's restart this room. Because I think there's more stuff to do over here. Was there? There's something on the left. No, there was not anything on the left. Nothing but emptiness. I have enough of that already. But now we can come up over here to where that, that door was that we found earlier. That we can go through. Okay, so now the key. So it does kind of drag on and on, although it help, would help if you didn't get stuck on every puzzle for a little while. I'm sure. Blow up! Alright, so I remember what you have to do here. So, we ran into a, a similar issue in a recent level, or in one of the uh, later levels of the game. Where we had to use a boomy to make something blow up. The freaking boomy would blow up fast enough for us to get through before a door would close. So, in this case, just like the last case, you have to throw something at the boomy in advance before the timer goes off to take care of that. Simple prospect. Yay, thing. Alright, so how do we get this one? Oh, this one's actually easy. We're just doing this in time, that is, knowing what to do. There we go. So I always have to remember that you can throw a boomy onto the floor and then pick it back up to get under a one high, or one block high area. And here's the final puzzle. Alright. So this one also, this was the one I remembered having a lot of trouble on, but... I've evidently had a lot of trouble on other things too. So the ultimate key, so the key to this initially uh, that I remember having helped me like figure out what to do is bringing
is bringing this block to the other side. If you do that, things just kind of fall into place, from what I remember. Because now I can just bring the boomy up here. Well, I don't need to do that, do I? Because now I can just leave that boomy there and then jump on up here. And that's what it is. And then be on my merry way. Two dreamstones left to be acquired. Where might those be? I always get nervous that I actually have... There we go. I was about to say, I'm always nervous at some point or another that I missed two dreamstones or so. In a level. You're gonna have to work to actually finish the level. What's up here? Oh, I see. You screw up. Well, at least they're kind enough to do that for you, I guess. Well, it'll probably be faster just to restart the level entirely. And better for your health. Alright, can we just quickly get through this part instead of having to wait for it? Yes, we can. Ah, darn it. That was being too quick. You have to wait for gravity to actually function. Klonoa, stop it. Actually, in fact, what I've been doing is I've been throwing the boomy downwards. My goodness to do is throw it on the pick and up. Hooray for efficiency. Oh, you! Mm. So close. I, ha I had that feeling of it is finally over in my head a little bit too soon. And it is finally over! <laughs> Man, that place lasts forever. And here's our reward. Just a nice little picture of Klonoa and Yupo. Uh, I do like Klonoa's original design a lot. This is probably my the game in which I like Klonoa's design the most, because it's actually a medium between uh, the first game and the later Klonoa games. He's not as small as he was in the other uh, Klonoa games. Or in the, he's not as small as he was in Door to Phantom Yield, but he's also not... He also just has the collar and all that other stuff that I thought was cute. Anyways, we have a cutscene, so let's look at that. No! We are not finished yet! No, you don't oh say my. that. How wonderful! Wonderful indeed! No! We are not finished yet! We can keep going! We. Oui. We. Oui. Well, how about we try once more? Once again, the script is in the description if you would like to view that instead of listening along to what our peculiar voice acting has offered, <laughs> or if you have any difficulties understanding it. And some of these turned out to be at like depressingly low volume, even though I turned up the volume on them too, just because the wonders of technology and stuff. Well, also, yeah, you can see this window, because I did a dumb thing. <laughs> Anyways, that's professional. And English, because why not? Like, poor Japanese people, man. A lot English. They have to put up with in their lives. At least people who play video games, I don't know. But anyways, that is it for Let's Play Kaze no Klonoa Moonlight Museum. This game was kind of an adventure for me, because I, I, when I had the idea for this and said, hey, I want to do a playthrough of this game, there just wasn't a coherent translation of the game. There was one to, there was kind of one from a person that in their own words doesn't English very well, that was a native Japanese speaker. 
and uh, that was basically the baseline for this translation, this script that uh, was used for this. So I basically just band together with another person that actually knows some amount of Japanese, and we made a script, basically. So this playthrough is, uh, aside from it being a playthrough of my own of this game, it's also just kind of an old way saying, hey, people, there's an English translation of this game now. Not a translation of the ROM, sadly, and it doesn't that's ever going to happen because people don't really know how Wonder Swan games work because nobody really cares, sadly. But oh well. Uh, so, this is one of those Let's Plays, there have been a couple for me where it's more than just a playthrough of a game to me. But also, sadly, I must say, it, this is going to be it for Clinical Let's Plays for a very long time as well. For there is yet to be a full translation of uh, Klonoa Heroes, the next game I'm just going to play in the Klonoa series. There are two Klonoa games I haven't played yet. There is one I want to save for the grand finale, and the other one, there is a translation for the game, an actual translation of the ROM, in progress, from what I hear. I have a picture to look at. Um, from what I hear, there's a translation of the ROM in progress. And I've sung to the people who are doing it a couple times, and it's pretty much at a standstill. It's been at a standstill for a while, but they still intend on doing it. They haven't forgotten about it, and they don't intend to ever forget about it. But we'll see how it all works out, I guess. Hopefully, it'll be all be okay. But however it works out, uh, we'll see. If it's never finished, I'll make something work because I really want to play through Pony Heroes as well, even if it'll be a long time from now. But. I intend to come back to the Kanoa series, and I do like it a lot, but I guess I won't get to offer my final thoughts on the series as a whole until then. And plus, I still haven't played all the games, so I can't really formulate those kinds of thoughts yet anyways, but I think I've got a pretty good idea of what I've come to think of the series. I'll have plenty to tell you guys about when it comes to that point, however long it may be in the future, how many months, even over a year. Who knows? Anyways. Enough focusing on the future, time to focus on the now. That is it for Let's Play Kazi no Klonoa Moonlight Museum. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for actually watching until this point. Listen to your ramble of things if you have. <laughs> and I'll see you guys next time in the next play of playthrough of whatever game it may be. Should it be next Klonoa game I play, if that's all you're interested in, or whatever other game it might be. I play games. <laughs> Watch them. If you wish. If not, goodbye to all of you. And thank you for your viewings and support. <laughs> it means a lot, guys. I enjoy this a lot. Not just because I'm playing video games, but because other people enjoy it as well. It's a thing that I can feel good about doing for reasons other than just it being something I enjoy doing. Because... People are pretty nice about this thing. I'm kind of surprised how little criticism I ever get when doing Let's Plays, and I'm very, very thankful for that. All of you that say the nice things you do, and even those of you who just don't say things, but still follow me silent regardless. A lot of you are special to me. <laughs> Anyways, enough of the corny stuff. See you guys.